Yes. We're, we're here for three reasons. Right? We're here for a vigil for the victim. Um, we're here to also celebrate the hero- heroic actions of everyday Australians, including police. But everyday Australians we saw yesterday standing up and willing to fight to defend our country. And thirdly, we're here to say to the, to the uh, uh, state government and federal government that we as Australians are unwilling to let Islamic terror, Islam, uh, take us over. So let's just recap on what actually happened here yesterday on our streets in Melbourne, Australia. People were going about their day normally when a jihadi, an Islamic terrorist, someone following the scripture, put it into practice and attacked innocent, tried to kill hundreds if not thousands of Australians and thankfully was stopped by the actions of a few, many filming it, but there were few Australians that stood up, including our brave police. But let's just think about who this man was for a second. He was a man that practices and believes in the Islamic scripture. He's a man that is on a terror watch list with 300 others. In fact, he's a low priority. What does that tell you about the other 299 amongst us? And what people need to understand is that we're allowing people to come to this country who basically have an agenda, and that agenda is it's not a good agenda. They, they're at war with us, and, and, and as so, the sooner that our politicians realise that, the better. We, we are, Islam is at war with us, and we've been talking about this for years, and these attacks are only going to get worse, and it's time that our politicians showed some backbone and stopped sacrificing us for the sake of political correctness. Our state premier, when he tells us that this is the normal life of living in a contemporary city or part and parcel of living in a city today in 2018, we must stand up. We We must reject that idea. And we must learn from those around the world who are suffering the same fate. There's an ideological reason behind what happened yesterday. And it's not a right or a a left-wing issue. Islam is anathema to everything that we stand for. It's at war with us, and it has been, as Avi said, for 1,400 years, and it's ramping up big time. And on the plane over, I was reading this. In The Australian Today, there's a, there's a, a whole booklet about a history of courage of all the men that have fought and died for our country. And... It's a tragedy. If they knew what was happening here, they had so much courage, and our political leaders have no courage. No courage whatsoever, and we are being sacrificed for the sake of political correctness. It's a jihadi incident. It's an Islamic jihadist attack. There's no one man. They follow Muhammad the Prophet, who leads him, who was a terrorist just like him. There are millions of them and we are importing them. It is not one man. That narrative of a lone wolf is false. It's absolutely false. Well, Why? Ha- because we keep importing it. And, and it's, it's not just happening in Australia. It's happening all over the world. If you look at what's going on in, in Israel, in the UK, we've seen soldiers hacked to death in, in London, um, terror attacks on London Bridge. It's a global phenomenon. And there's one thing at the core of it that's driving it, and that is Islamic doctrine. And it's as simple as that. And, it's, and it's, when people understand that, then we'll have a chance to save ourselves, basically. <laughs> Communist, yeah.
just one final thing. There is no, there is no moderate version of Islam. There is only one version. Only one. I love Australia and I love my fellow human beings. I absolutely love them. But Islam is it's anathema to everything that we stand for. And it's not about it's not a like a right or a left wing issue. Um, it's a human rights issue and it's our human rights that are at stake.